Hello to our in-studio audience and welcome to this special edition of The Big Money Show. This is The Big Money Playbook, Education in America. I'm Jackie DeAngelis. I'm Taylor Ray. And I'm Brian Brenberg. We're here today because it's time for students and parents to take their power back. We want to give each American the tools to confidently choose their path. It's up to all of us to make an impact. The work starts right now. So here's where we stand today. Many of America's children fell behind during the pandemic and they've stayed behind. A new report reveals that students managed to recover only about one third of the original loss in math. And I know that we've coming up Ken Coleman on the program to really walk us through this is it opens up the labor pool, the applicant pool for these companies. But if you are someone who maybe doesn't want to go to college, can't afford it, whatever your reason is, you actually now have maybe more opportunities out there if companies are saying our state's health help people find more options for their kids. And of course, we're going to be talking to our fabulous audience and we're going to be talking to a great panel about how their experience has been, whether they're in school or they've got kids who are in school. Mm. They're navigating all of these challenges. They're trying to make smart choices. They're also dealing with some of the pushback that they're getting from the government and that can be really hard to navigate. I think you said something really fun in our meeting this morning. Instead of trying to take the government out of education, how do we put parents sort of back I feel in? like this is a really challenging time for education and in some ways I agree with that but the most challenging times also tend to be times of great opportunity where entrepreneurs can step into the mix and make change oh, sure. that's what we're all about here how do you change things for the better how can entrepreneurs help us do that this is America we have freedom we want people to feel they have freedom and learn how to exercise it and take their power right. back Great point. That's what's really Great important. Point. All right. Well, we've got a lot of people with us today in our audience. We're so excited that you're here. And I just want to get a sense a little bit of like who you guys are. So I want to know who in the audience is a student themselves. Anybody? All right. So we've got two students. Who is a parent that's dealt with little kids or big kids going through school? We've got a majority of parents as well. Um, anybody here considering higher education versus maybe starting a business or trade school? We've talked about that a lot on our program. All right, so I don't see any of that here. Um, did anyone skip college? Did anybody just say, I'm not doing it, it's not worth it? Okay, so we've got two people who have done that, but that's certainly not a majority, guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think more recently, right, as a result of what they're seeing in colleges, the high cost of college. Best bumps here, there we go. Hey. Good to see you, sir. Good to be here. All right, so it's always great to have you. Thank you. We love having you on the show every week. To everybody in America, what do you think the biggest problem is right now? Uh, kids are going through uh, in terms of math, uh, particularly math and other things, even physical education. You know, they, they, they get out, they run around at the whole, you know, they, they swim, they do everything. Right. They bring it back, they go to school six days a week. This has been a big pet peeve of mine for many years, mm -hmm. many, many, many years. And these trends that you quoted at the beginning with respect to the, the, the pandemic, this is something that's been going on a lot longer than that. I mean, and this is really the problem is that this has been a lingering problem and it's put us at a real serious predicament. One of the themes I I love to hear you talk about how much education influences that. I mean, you write books, you do a show, and it's all about helping people be uh, have self-governance in their lives, especially financially. Talk about where the big gaps are in education right now that keep people from that financial independence. Well, there's two things. Um, there's, there's. He's like, what, why are you going out with him? You know, he's like the ugliest guy in the village. She said, yeah, but he's also the smartest. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Yep. And at that moment, that guy said, I want to be smart. Yep. Meantime, we've got a brilliant studio audience here. We want to ask some questions. And I want to get to Nicole, who is with us, because she's got an interesting question about financial literacy. And you actually have a very unique experience. So tell us. Um, I grew up on the low east side of Manhattan. I went to John Jay College. UPS came and recruited. Yeah. And they offered she raised your hand and said, I didn't go to college. But Nicole, what I thought was so interesting about your story mm -hmm. is you did get the financial literacy at a young level. And you were excited about it and so were your peers Nobody's getting the financial literacy in school nobody is I think I hate to say it but the teachers union uh, they're all sort of out for themselves mm. and the way they do it is they water down expectations so they have low hurdles to, to climb okay look at what we did for these kids we deserve this we deserve that hit the pavement we went out on the street we were asking some questions to see what people wanted to ask you here's what uh -oh. we 
Uh, you know, that's a great question. Uh, you know, my mother. Keep it there with the great Charles Payne. Right. <laughs> Blow it up and start all over again. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much. Appreciate, appreciate it. All right, from fringe to the fastest growing form of education, why homeschooling could be the answer for families looking for alternatives. All right. And House Education Committee Chairwoman Virginia Fox. Congresswoman, um, your story starts similar to a lot of parents today. You attend a school board meeting, you start to find your voice. I am a new mom. What would you tell parents like me looking to get involved today? Well, I think starting at the school board is a good way to do it. Um, get involved with your children's education. Learn what's happening in the classroom. I, I agree with Brian. Homeschooling is a great uh, choice for parents. What we are pushing in the con Congress right now is education freedom. We have an educational choice for children. Which would an act, and obviously we've been talking about the cost of college, how that's a problem for so many. Um, we're going to put up a screen in a moment that talks a little bit about what is in that bill. One of the things that I thought was so interesting was adding a universal net price calculator to the college. See, in everything in education, we want students to know what they're going to get when they are going to a college or university in terms of financial aid. Absolutely. The key word there is transparency. Yes. Congresswoman Fox, great to see you today. Thanks for being here. Thank you very much for having me. It's a great show. Thank you for being here. So let me dive right in. Uh, Tiffany, we were talking earlier about literacy, the, the lack we've seen in our schools and the importance of it. And I'm always thinking about the economic impact of that. Tell us about how you think about the economic implications of literacy right now. I want to come to you because during the pandemic, parents actually had an opportunity with the kids learning at home to see what was really going on. The curtain was pulled back. So they saw things like woke curriculum, woke things right. were being woven through that they didn't necessarily want their kids learning. Um, and now in a post October 7th world um, that's being woven through that parents are concerned about what are the solutions there? You know, you want to run down and grab your kid and say you can't go to school here. Some people don't have mm -hmm. that option. Right. Right. You're ready when they graduate. Daniela, it sort of leads me to you when you talk about the frustrations with the New York City public school system, um, but of course then being able to afford an outside tutor to help with reading and math. What happens if you can't afford that? Yeah, and Jenna, you're a student currently. You're at Montclair State University. Talk to me a little bit about your experience there. You want to do a four-year program, and do you feel you made the right choice for you? So, about the fact that we don't expect enough from students anymore. Well, you are a wonderful hope for the future. Wow. And I sort of want to end with you, Tiffany, on that note. When you think about a solution for tomorrow, a hope for tomorrow. If you're someone at home watching this, what is the key takeaway about how we can make sure that we are invested in our children, in our education for a better tomorrow? Jackie, I want, can I just ask a really quick question? Of I, I'm taken by this insurance thing. You're running an insurance I, business. I was going to ask okay. the same question. Okay, so you, so you go. What's your question for Jenna? Yeah. I wanted to ask what made you go to school and also pursue a private business opportunity at the same time. <laughs> so a big thing of mine was Jenna, that. Jenna, that, that is so Amazing. great. Thank you for Thank that. Thank you all. To Thank Tiffany, you. Maude, Daniela, Way, and Jen. And thank you to the audience. Thank you to yes. the audience, yep. And I think we learned a lot. We learned a lot about the frustrations that Americans feel, but a path forward for tomorrow. Yeah. There we go. Well, that's going to do it for us. This was really fun today. A big thank you again to our audience, our guests, our panel members.